All right, hey guys. Tonight we're looking at the, the Halo Strategic Thorax, uh, their plate carrier that dropped, I think, mid last year, uh, maybe earlier this year. I can't remember exactly when it came out. Uh, but a lot of you guys have asked my opinion on this thing, and it was really hard to, to give an opinion on it, even having watched all of their marketing materials, because I still don't really understand what pieces plug and play with what. Uh, so this one has the, the chicken strap or chicken belt uh, cummerbund. I think they have some pouches that uh, interface with that a lot like the ABS pouches interface with the ABS harness. Uh, and then they have like their side entry cummerbund, uh, a more traditional cummerbund. Uh, they've got different uh, placards that you can buy, all sorts of stuff. Uh, this particular setup, I pieced it all out or priced it all out, $504. Uh, keep that in mind as we go through the features on here, uh, but we'll get it on the table and take a look at it. All right, so looking at the, the Thorax plate carrier tonight. Uh, so, you know, apologies to the gentleman that sent me this. Um, it, my, my initial impression is I'm a little bit underwhelmed by it. Uh, it, was, it was certainly not the most comfortable plate carrier that I've worn, uh, and it was bordering on uncomfortable. That, that could change depending on your size and, and your fitness and everything, and, and I'm sure... For some people, it is, it's a, a very comfortable play carrier, uh, but it was not for me. All right, and I think a lot of that had to do with this, uh, the chicken strap cummerbund. There's no stretch to it at all. Uh, there's no lacing in the back. There's no elastic built into it. So kind of what you, what you have is what you get. Uh, so if you want it stable, you know, kind of when your, when your chest is, you know, decompressed, uh, then as you, as you breathe in and exert yourself more, uh, it gets very, very snug, very fast. All right. uh, also, you know, watching the, the marketing materials, I think I was under the impression there was, there was just more to the features uh, than what I'm seeing. And I don't know if it's because I don't have all of the, the bits and pieces to really play with it or not, but I'll walk you through what's on here and uh, you guys can judge for yourselves. All right, so uh, looking at the front plate bag, it is rather straightforward. You've got, you know, a, a good size field for your uh, placard mounting. And then you have four rows and four columns of uh, Velcro covered molly webbing. All right, each one of these is usable uh, all the way up and down here. Uh, so if you had, you know, a, a three row pouch, uh, you can you can stagger that anywhere that you want to. Uh, you additionally have some side release buckles for placard mounting that are hidden under these these tweeve panels here. Uh, the tweeve panels can also be used for uh, comms wire routing uh, or or whatever else you need it for. Uh, there's not a, a readily you have to have field repair buckles to to get them on and off of the straps. So if you don't need uh, a placard for whatever reason, or you don't need the side release buckles, you're going to have to take the buckles off and you still have the strap there. Not a huge deal. Uh, the tunnels, I think, are a nice thought. Uh, and potentially, they could potentially clean up comms wires pretty well. But I, I don't necessarily think that they're needed for kind of hiding the buckles or silencing the buckles. Uh, I'm just not, I'm not sure. Uh, as far as placard ride height goes... We'll get these snapped in here so that you guys can see. So the, the Haley placard uh, at kind of full, full length uh, runs just along the bottom of the plate bag there. Uh, the, the Kydex overhangs the edge of the plate bag just a hair. Uh, <clears throat> but that's kind of where it sits. And you could, you could tuck that up a little bit, but you can't really take out any slack on this. Uh, so some placards, depending on, on their ride height may, you know, may ride really high or may, uh, sit quite deep. It just depends on what's going on. As far as the, this placard goes while we're, while we're kind of sitting here, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, and it's nothing against Haley. I just don't like uh, Kydex retention on my plate carrier. I've been burned by it in the past. Uh, it, 
it's too much retention in my opinion, uh, especially with the way these, these Haley inserts are set up. Uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure where it comes in, but they have a very audible click uh, when you insert the mag fully, and it's a little bit to, to break past that point. Uh, I, I, you know, if it works for you, it works for you. I'm just not a huge fan of, of the Kydex on my chest. All right. <clears throat> uh, this particular placard also has their, their kind of goofy built-in 10 speed capability. I don't want to stretch out this guy's placard too much here, but you can, you can fit mags on top of mags there if you want. Uh, the, the sides of the, or the, the bottoms of the two sides are open and then the, the center is sewn across the bottom. So if you have, I, I think one of the examples is like a right in the rain notebook. Like you can, you can insert that and it can hang out the bottom. Um, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily like the idea of the open bottom. Just it, it limits in my opinion, what you can put in there. Cause if you're dropping, you know, like a tool in there. You know, that's, that's in there, but how long is that in there before it works its way out, right? If you drop it in this one, obviously it's not going anywhere. It's in the way of your mags a little bit. Um, so that, that's going to depend on the height of what you're putting in there. If it's something that has a clip uh, that can hang over there, like maybe you've got, uh, you know, a folding knife or something like that with a pocket clip, that's a different story. It'll stay pretty well. I just don't see the, the huge selling point of the, the open bottoms, right? Get this placard back out of the way here. The shoulder straps can be a little confusing. Uh, so they are fixed on the front plate bag. There's, there's nothing else that you can do with this area. Uh, so you have this one horizontal piece of webbing for more routing capabilities, and then this uh, vertical webbing with a, a little gap there. And to remove or, or move this, this shoulder pad, you undo the one wrap here, and then you can slide it back and kind of compress it, undo this Velcro, and take some slack out of the shoulder straps. Uh, and you can likewise do the same going the other direction if you need to get to the, the back there. All right. uh, it fit me pretty well at, at this length. I was able to get the plate bags high enough. Uh, so... I think that they sized their shoulder straps pretty well. And I think that the, the shoulder strap pads are a nice touch. Uh, they don't have an excessive amount of padding in them. They're very similar to the old um, Eagle pads or first spear pads that were like the trifold with the, the little elastic bands across them. Uh, it's about that amount of padding. And then you've got this tweed sleeve on top of that. Uh, for for routing whatever you need to and the gentleman that sent me this had a source bladder on here the tube fit through there just fine uh, So I think the functionality on the pads is pretty good and I want to say they were they were $40 So I think you know if nothing else These these shoulder strap covers are a, a pretty good buy $40. I think you get some good functionality out of them and uh, They're they're rather minimalist right? uh, As we look at the plate bags here the insides of the plate bags have uh, foam with kind of a, a channel in there, uh, which is also some kind of neat branding with the, the dragonfly tail there. Uh, the sides of the plate bags are tweev, so you've got some, some give there for thickness of plates. I've got e-sappies and backers in here, and they fit fine uh, width-wise. And then across the top of the plate bag, you have a little bit more padding there, which is kind of nice for your chin. Uh, just in case you end up eating your plates for some reason. What I will say is I could absolutely feel this foam uh, strip here more than I could the sides of the plate bag. I know that the, the logo in there is to help with some circulation. I would really would have rather they had foam on, on the sides and then a center channel. And in the, the small amount of experience that I have, uh, that tends to allow heat to escape better, in my opinion, than having open sides. Uh, as far as plate bag closure goes, I, I give everybody a pass on it, but it still kind of annoys me. Like, this is the standard armor setup. Uh, if you are marketing this as a, a, a duty quality plate carrier, 
uh, and you still have to fight to engage the Velcro, right? Uh, so I, I really wish this plate, this flap was just a little bit longer so I, I didn't have, you know, exposed hooks. That said, there is a ton of continuity here, and I'll show you where that comes from. So you've got this length of one wrap here. Uh, you've got your main flap, and then this one wrap engages with Velcro that runs all the way up the the underside of this, this foam. Uh, so your plates are not gonna come out by any stretch. Even if we didn't engage any of this flap, uh, this is a lot of Velcro contact there to keep that in place. And it does have this nice little pull tab so you kind of like pull the Velcro away from itself uh, to help get the plate pocket open, right? Uh, so that is your, your front plate bag there. Now we'll look at the back plate bag. You know, internally, it is the same. Uh, however, once we open the plate bag, we now have access to the cummerbund flap. Uh, looking at the cummerbund, or the, the back plate pocket, I immediately had a flashback to uh, the brief amount of time that I owned a CPC, and it looks very similar, you know, just minus the zippers. I actually just caught this. This is kind of unfortunate. I hope I didn't do this, but the, the one wrap uh, is not retaining. It doesn't have enough body for this, this function to take place. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the, the tab is pulling away there. Uh, if I cause that dude that sent this to me, just let me know how you want me to fix that. I apologize. Uh, so looking at the back, uh, no zippers, no, no way of attaching a, a, any kind of quick remove back panel. Uh, what is interesting is this gutted paracord running the length of the outside. I had actually forgotten that this was a, a thing on here. Uh, to provide you some, some tie-off points uh, for whatever you might want to tie off on there. That is, I don't know, a thing. Um, the only issue I have with it is really all of that same capability already exists with the molly like you can you can tie off to the molly and just have it hang off so if you're rubber banding something you slip your rubber band around the molly and sticks off the edge uh, so it is a, a capability but the capability was kind of already there in the first place right uh, you do have nice you know relatively full coverage on the molly could have had another uh, column on this second to the top one here uh, if it wasn't for the way that the uh, shoulder straps mounted. Uh, as we pull up this flap, you'll see that there's, you know, good Velcro field there for any Velcro mounted cummerbund that you might want. You'll notice that the, the mounting area on the, the chicken strap is pretty minimal. I don't know how much stress you would have to put on that to have issues with that potentially coming undone. I don't think it's very likely. Uh, but it is a pretty small amount of contact there. Uh, what is nice, though, with, with this thin of a, a cummerbund, you do have the ability to fix the ride height of the plate bags. Uh, you can have, you know, the back fairly low, and then you can bring the cummerbund up kind of like mid-height on the front bag, and that should level everything out for you. Uh, looking at the, the actual chicken strap, I, thought, I really thought there was more going on here uh, than it appears, and maybe I'm maybe I'm doing something wrong, uh, but it's essentially a chunk of micro molly belt. I don't know how the the chicken strap pouches engage with it, uh, but this is just functional molly here, and then you know this. I think this band here is actually usable too, if you wanted. Yeah, that's that's also functional molly. Um, so you can you can mount pouches on here, um, and then you can kind of. Uh, I guess what's nice is you can adjust the ride height of the pouches a little bit too by, by manipulating where the cummerbund sits on the vest, which is kind of an added benefit of it being so short. Uh, I don't necessarily know that it's a needed benefit. It does have uh, some spacer mesh and a little bit of kind of what feels like padding in there, but I think it's all coming from the spacer mesh. And then there is a, a very rigid uh, piece of probably Tegris in there uh, that keeps it from, from folding over on itself. Uh, however, it doesn't do much for um, your, your lateral stability, right? Um, 
and it, it's so short that like I don't know what would even have a chance to really fold over. It would it would essentially be like just hanging a pouch off of just here and then that that pulling down. So I'm not I'm not really sold on this you know Molly belt cummerbund. I don't know. But you don't have to get it. You can get one of their other options. And uh, one of them is a, a very standard uh, Molly cummerbund. So that may be the way that you want to go. Uh, looking at the rear shoulder strap attachment, I'm not super sold on the way that it's done. It looks plenty strong. Uh, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of the need for these kind of floating buckles. Uh, you do have some kind of articulation there, almost like you would on the scarab just not as well done, uh, but it's it's a good chunk of plastic there. So you could potentially have issues with uh, a backpack riding over that. I don't think it's crazy likely, uh, but with that pull tab there, that's not really doing anything because there's no, there's no friction to this buckle. Uh, it could have been a lower profile buckle. Uh, I think that's really about it, at, at least in this configuration. Um, I don't know. I, it is not, it's not poorly made, aside from that little one wrap snafu that I just showed you. Uh, the things are, stitches are reinforced. Uh, you've got edge binding where you should have edge binding. Quality materials for sure. But I, I'm not seeing $504 of utility in this thing. $504 will get you into a pretty well set up, uh, plate minus, or not plate minus, uh, SNS Precision plate frame redo, uh, which is as minimal as this setup and, and much more comfortable. So I'm kind of, kind of underwhelmed. Uh, I don't know if you, if you snag like one of their 30% off deals, uh, like they had for Father's Day, maybe then it's worthwhile. But as it sits here, that is, that is not a $504 purchase. I mean, $504 will get you into an ABS, uh, which is, you know, significantly more capable setup. So, I don't know. I I, I really don't want to have anything against Haley, but I'm just not I'm not sold on this thing at all, guys. Uh, so thanks for your time.